redemption. Does anybody feel the glory of God already in this place? Oh, come on, church. We can do a little bit better than that. I said, does anybody already feel the glory of God in this place? Well, let's not waste any time. Come on, begin to lift your voice, Father. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. We declare that there was no one above you. God, that there's no one greater than you. We declare that you are great. You are greatly to be praised. Let's go. All right, church, hands up. Come on. All right, church, let's go. We were seated on high when that you spoke to we were already on your mind yeah can't explain your love without performance you call us your own good enough for it yeah with your blood you bought our freedom can't explain your love Yeah. 
this place. Hallelujah. Hey. Good morning, Redemption. I'm so glad that you were here. We're doing something a little bit different. So you say, Pastor, why are you interrupting our praise and worship? Well, I'm not. I'm just steering it a little bit. We have so many people uh, that accept Christ on a weekly basis. It's become almost impossible to incorporate baptisms in just a normal service uh, because of the sheer number of people. Like this morning, I think it's about 27 people this morning got saved. And, and nine o'clock in the morning. So it's not a problem, it's just you gotta get creative. And uh, we were getting together in our weekly meetings and I was with my creative team and I just said, you know what? I wanna incorporate the baptism into our normal service. I said, it's just a way to work it in there. We got about 30 more people that are gonna be baptized. So here's what we're gonna do. You'll see it on the screens every once in a while. The cameras will catch it, but the Bible talks about when you're saved that you're born of water and the Spirit. When you get born again spiritually, there's, there is no equal. That is the greatest spiritual experience you will ever have. But the Bible says there's an earthly expression, and that's water baptism. When we leave it all in the water and you come out new life, hallelujah. So during our next several worship songs, we're gonna worship. And while we're worshiping, people are gonna be leaving it all in the water. Is that all right? And if you want to rejoice with them, if you're here and that's one of your family members or friends, this is a church you can shout amen and holler and clap, do whatever you want to do. But we just wanted to do it all at the same time. Is that all right? Somebody give Jesus praise. This is about to be a great worship service. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Hands lifted all across the room. As we've seen that our God is our champion in this place. Come on. I've tried so hard to see it. it took me so long to believe it If you choose someone like me To carry your victory Perfection could never earn it You give what we don't deserve Take the broken things and raise them to glory. Sing it. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you've won. Holy declare. I am who you say I am. Crown me with confidence, I'm seated in the heavenly place, undefeated with the one who has conquered it all. So we sing it out, now I can finally see, come on. Now I can finally see it, you're teaching me how to receive it. To let all the striving trees hold This is my victory You are my champion Giant falls Every battle Every battle Every captive is made free today. Who oh, we declare? So we say. When I leave. 
lifts my voice in shout Everyone comes crashing down I have the authority Come on, declare it Jesus has given me
I'm a champion. Every voice. You are my champion. The war is over, church. Giants fall when you stand up. Every battle. Every battle. No matter what you're facing, I am. I am who you say. victory just lift your hands to heaven begin to give a glory in this place come on just begin to worship him from the posture of victory we don't worship for victory we're worshiping from victory today come on we praise not for it we praise from it the battle is over the war has been won we have a reason to worship this morning Come move over us <laughs> Come rest on us Come rest on us As yes, the Spirit was moving over the world Spirit come move over us Come rest Come rest on us Come rest on us Come down Spirit when you move you make my heart down When you fill the room yeah, yes. You're here
you may be in your spiritual life right now you may have been saved for 30 years or you may have just wandered here and said man I'm in desperate need for something and you're just scrolling or anything in between that's not for me to guess it's for me to present you to Jesus to present Jesus to you I want to get you and Jesus together and get out of the way because it's not about me it's not about us it's not about a church it's about do you know Jesus this is a highly highly personal decision because when Jesus asked his 12 disciples, he said, who do men say that I am? He really didn't care. He then said, but who do you say that I am? And you know what? When everything is said and done and your time on earth has come to an end, you'll be asked, who do you say that I am? You won't stand with your grandma. You won't stand with your family. You won't stand with others who have been saved. It'll be a personal decision. And have you made it? Would you make it right now? I want you to know it. He's my best friend. He never leaves me. He's always a present help in a time of trouble. And I'd like for you to know him. And if you want to know him, the prayer goes something like this. I thank you, Lord, that you died and rose again on the third day. I thank you that you shed blood so that I could be free of sin. Forgive my sins. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. 
I thank you for your gift of salvation, and I accept it today. In Jesus' name, amen. Ah, if you accepted Christ Jesus, welcome to the family, and you have gotten some way to let us know, because we want this to be the greatest decision you've ever made and see you grow from here and see what God wants to do in your life. Deciding to follow Jesus is the biggest step that you could have taken. We want to accompany you on this journey of faith. Let us join you by texting Jesus to the number at the bottom of your screen or scanning the QR code. First time joining Redemption Online? Welcome. Connect with us by texting NEW to the number at the bottom of your screen or by scanning the QR code. Our next season of Life Groups is right around the corner and we're looking for leaders just like you. Click the link in the chat to let us know you're interested or visit myredemption.cc slash lifegroups and scroll down to lead a life group. We can't wait to see you make a difference. Growing in faith is a critical aspect of our journey with Christ. And one way to grow is through serving. That's what Growth Track is all about. To join, all you have to do is sign up, complete the pre-work, then attend the session that works best for you. Growth Track sessions are held on the second and fourth Sunday of each month, and you only need to choose one to attend. Click Grow on i.church to get the process started. Now, let's head back into service. We come to this point in our service, which is not the intermission. This is not where we separate the songs from the guy that talks. It's not what's happening. This is where worship goes to the next level. He says, praise me with the stringed instruments. He said, praise me with the drums and the cymbals. He says, praise me in the dance. He said, praise me with the clapping of the hands. He say, offer to me the fruit of your lips. And then he says, now worship me with your possessions. And that's when everybody quits clapping and gets quiet, just like you right there. Let me challenge you. Psalm 119 says, David said to God, he said, Oh Lord, your word is forever settled in heaven. Nobody's arguing and debating the word of God in heaven. Nobody's debating God as to whether or not he can heal. Nobody's debating God as to whether or not he's Jehovah Jireh, your provider. Nobody's debating God over whether or not he's the Messiah and the Savior of the world. There's no debate. It's settled. The problem is it's not settled in the earth. The Word of God is settled in heaven, but never says it's settled in the earth. Because that means it's got to be settled in me and it's got to be settled in you. And when we come to this point, and if you're still shaky and suspicious and don't really know how you feel, it's because His Word on this is not settled. Like for instance, I didn't get up this morning wondering if I'm saved. Settled. What has happened in heaven has happened in me and it's settled. I didn't get up this morning wondering if God could heal me. It's settled. I didn't get up this morning worried about eternity. I know where I'm going to spend eternity. It's settled. There's no anxiety about it. I did not. I, it's settled. It's done. Okay. But then Jehovah Jireh, my provider, we get to that point and we're not settled. And I'm thinking to myself, how can I believe God for eternity, but I can't believe him with my paycheck? I'm gonna stake all of eternity on he, the claims that he makes, but when I get to my finances, I'm not gonna believe the claims that he makes. That's because we've not settled in our heart. He is truly Jehovah Jireh, our provider, the Lord who has got your back, the Lord who will supply you. He will be your source. He will take care of your needs. And if everything is falling apart, he's still going to make sure you're taken care of. See, when I get to this point, there's no anxiety because I'm settled. Okay? I love a Krispy Kreme donut. It's got to be something sinful. It's got to be wrong. The way you can put a donut and then that kind of donut in your mouth and you don't even have to chew it. It's got to be something wrong with that. But I didn't like what they were doing. So I had to make a decision. Am I going to eat them or not? So I had to say, I'm not going to eat them. So whenever someone puts one under my nose, I don't have to make another new decision. Because it's... Father, 
bless the gift and the giver. And like we've trusted you with salvation, like we've trusted you with eternity, like we've trusted you with forgiving our past and giving us a whole new future, like we trust you with altar calls for healing. Lord, let us trust you with our substance. Let us trust you with our resources. So we come to you this moment, Lord, we believe that if we just obey you and do what your word says, it can be settled in earth just like it is in heaven. So do it, oh God, I pray in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Here's all the ways you can give. Let's go, praise team. All right, church, come on. It is settled. We are bringing our tithes and offerings and faith today. Let's make it loud in this place. Now, to our Hey, guys, how are you doing? I'm so glad that you are enjoying these services with us. I'm glad that you chose to worship with us. You had many options. We don't take it lightly that you're with us. And this is the time we're worshiping God with our substance, with our tithe and offering. And like I just said to them, I'm saying to you, if I can trust him with eternity, if I can trust him with salvation, if I can trust him with my kids, if I can trust him with my family, my marriage, why can't I trust him with my substance? This is the time to settle in your heart that he is your provider and just simple keys of obedience will unlock his provision in your life. That's why we bring the tithe and that's why we bring our offerings to him. Would you join me now in this? And don't go away. I got two left of heavenly chaos and I don't want you to miss it. I'll see you in just a second. More people have chosen to use text to give as their preferred way of giving because it is safe, quick, and very easy. Here's how it works. Open a new text message on your phone and use your text to give number. Text RCM to 864 920 1282. The very first time you use the service to give, you will receive a text message with a link to a registration form. Click the link in the text and it will direct you to enter your information. You will only have to enter your information once to set up the service. Then it's a matter of seconds to give. It's safe and secure, easy to use, and you will receive an instant receipt. Add your text to give number in your contact list so you'll have it ready. That's it. Giving has never been so easy. And we thank you for your generosity. To our wonderful virtual family, I just want to say, man, I'm so glad that you're here. So Instagram Live, YouTube Live, Facebook Live, all the lives. You know what? You're doing it live with us. You don't have to be in the building. We're connected together. Thank God for this technology and the people that know how to run it for us to be able to worship together and enjoy the Word together. I want you to open your heart, open your mind. We're on the backside right now of this heavenly chaos, and I mean these last two messages are strong, so I want you to be ready to receive what I believe the Lord has put in my heart to say. Thank you for being here. Now, let's get in the Word. Have you ever wondered what's happening when you praise? Have you ever wondered what's happening? You sit here, I'm lifting my hands, I'm clapping my hands. I see the preacher dancing around on the stage. You've got to understand that there's so much more happening than what you see happening in the room. The Bible lets us know that when we praise, there are things happening in the invisible world and there are things that are happening in the heavens that they are powerful even though we can't see them. I want you to take this journey of praise and worship with me as we contribute to this heavenly chaos. Have you enjoyed Heavenly Chaos? I know that I have. I really have. And I, I preached this message. I had a method to the madness. It's really, I felt in my heart the first of the year that God just wanted to take the praise and worship culture of our church to another level. And uh, I've noticed something about people, not just Bay Area slash Silicon Valley people. I've noticed something about all people. You can't fully possess a thing if you don't understand it. Okay? I've had a Tesla for a year and a half. I'm not a tech guy at all. It is amazing that God dropped me right in the middle of tech world. I can't even hardly cut on an iPad. And I'm still, my son will get in that car and say, Dad, well, just make it do this and just hit this and it'll do this. And I'm, and I'm sitting there looking at him like he's a genius, you know, because I don't even, because you can't fully possess it if you don't fully understand it. 
And there's a lot of times in the church that I grew up in, they just tell you to do stuff. And I never, I never knew why I was doing it. What, okay, I don't mind, but why does God want me to do this? <clears throat> That's why I always try to tell you something about giving. I don't say just give. What is it doing? What's happening? What's going on? You know, when you, when you got your hands in the air, what's going on? When you're taking out a shout, what's going on? And so uh, I, I know that when we begin to get a hold of these principles and these keys from the Bible, I knew something was going to happen. And it has. It has. And I hope you're enjoying this praise and worship atmosphere like I am. Because I'm telling you, I could just get on the floor and roll around in it every Sunday. Amen. Psalm 22, verse 3. I talked about it a little bit. I'm going to jump start there today. Psalm 22, verse 3. But thou art holy. O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Thou that inhabits praise. Thou who lives in praise. The one who tabernacles in praise. The one who makes his house in praise. It's never been about clapping, singing, dancing, and music. It's been about him inhabiting praise. I've heard many times people say, man, we want a great visitation of God. We just want a God. Who wants a God that drops by? I don't want God to visit me and leave. That's why the Bible says his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Why? Because if I give him a continual house, he's going to continually inhabit it. I, my alarm went off this morning. I got up and turned, and as my feet were hitting the floor, I said, I praise you, Lord. Before I hit the coffee pot, before I hit anything, I praise you, Lord. I'm driving here. It's still dark outside. Lord, I thank you today. Lord, I give you glory today. It's, some of you say, well, I need a prayer time. I pray all day. I talk to God all day. God is not an event in my life. God is a relationship in my life. <clears throat> I walk up and down the halls and talk to him. And, and so I want God to stay and to dwell. He lives in me, but I want him to live in my atmosphere. And that's the atmosphere that you create for God. And that's why I say, if there's no praise, you have the absence of, absence of God because you've not given him a place to live. So churches that just refuse to pray him, that's why the atmospheres are so dead. God's not active in the room. Why? Because they've given him no room. They've given him no space. So that leads me to this. You are in control of the size of God you experience. And whether or not you have an encounter with God in this building will not be up to God. It will be up to you. And the Southeast come in and say, boy, I hope we have a good service today. And I just looked at my staff one time and I say, look, I want us to quit saying that. And they said, why? I said, because God don't have bad services. I said, we do. And I said, we will experience as much of God as we praise. And I said, so if we commit to that, we will experience him every single time. And that's the culture I want. I don't want you to just see me or see friends when you come here. I want you to experience God or we've missed it. We've missed it. If people leave here and don't really believe that God was in the room. So Lord, bless your word. Bless the reading of it. And I pray, God, as we wind this down, let us get it, understand it, possess it, and seal it up in our hearts. I pray, God, in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. If you're new to this church, the last two weeks, we talk a lot at this church, okay? So look at your neighbor and say, here we go, neighbor, here we go. <laughs> I'm to the point now where this, I don't want it to sound disjointed, but I've just got six or seven principles about praise I just haven't gotten to yet. And so instead of this kind of having a flow where I'm just trying to use that 35, 40 minutes to take you somewhere, what I'm doing is actually I'm gonna go, okay, point number one, point number two, point, because I just got some stuff about praise that we need to know that I just have not covered in the previous 100 messages I preached on this or however many it is now. First thing I want to talk about is something I hit with the East Coast last week that I haven't said here. And I want to talk a minute about the sacrifice of praise. I'm not going to read all the scriptures because in the first service I find out if I do, I'm not going to have time. 
So some of them, I'm just going to quote them and you can fact check me later when you get home. But the psalmist said this, offering to him the sacrifice of praise. And it also says it again in Hebrews 13. The fruit of our lips. The sacrifice of praise. The fruit of our lips. What is a sacrifice of praise? I taught you a little bit, but I want to go, I want to go in depth. That your praise cannot ebb and flow with your weak. Okay? You can't have an argument with your husband and come in here on the way to church and give a mad praise. <laughs> or stand back there and do nothing because you're mad. Okay? Because you have just made your praise and worship experience what I call subjective. It was about you. Not understanding that your God's worthiness has not changed with your latest argument. Your praise and worship is objective. Therefore, therefore should be totally unaffected by your present mood. Now this is not deep, but it needs to be said. <laughs> because these are the main inhibitors of praise and worship services. It should not be subject to whether or not you're tired or energetic. Okay, I'm just going to use myself as an example because I don't know your experiences. I cannot tell you the times I've rolled in here exhausted and walked in the door with my hands in the air. Walked through the door and got down here at the front and made a bigger fool out of myself than anybody in the building. And I mean, and the only thing I wanted to do was find somewhere and lay down because of a ridiculous two or three week schedule that I'd been keeping. It does not ebb and flow with what's going on in your life. I also can't tell you the times over hundreds of services a year for now 33 years that I've had to get up when some calamity was going on in my life and I've got to go out in a building this size and instigate and encourage a people to praise God and my heart shattered. And I'm spinning and twirling and jumping around the front of the building and sweat running down my face and my heart's in a million pieces. And I walk into people and encourage everybody and walk out and cry because I gave all my courage away. Only thing I can tell you about is my experiences. Why? Because I've always understood, and like I did at the offering, it's settled in me that he is forever worthy of my highest praise. And if you always praise God according to how you feel, everybody else is going to look at you like you serve a schizophrenic God. Because your feelings are all over the place. You may change your mind four times about what you want to eat for supper tonight. You don't worship God out of feelings. You worship God. It's not about you. It's not subjective. He is the object. He's the objective of all worship. And his worthiness is a consistency. And then sometime, here's what God will do. Uh, uh, the, the concept of sacrifice means something has to die. And usually the thing that has to die to make a sacrifice of praise is something internally that's going on within us. You're going to have to kill it to be consistent in your praise. Because you came in here with good news last week. You closed the deal. Biggest commission ever. <laughs> Making a fool out of yourself. Knocking everybody down. <laughs> okay? And this week you find out your CFO was embezzling. And there you sit. See, then it's become about you and what you're going through. And you have lost the turnaround element to praise. Because let me tell you what God will do. God will wait for you to slay that emotion, that negative emotion. And praise him with tears coming down your cheeks and your heart in a million pieces. And when you praise him with tears coming down your cheeks, then God will begin to get in your trouble and begin to turn that thing around. And before you even get back home from the church service, God has done work the miracle because you didn't praise according to your disappointment. You didn't praise according to your fear and doubt and anxiety or anger. You praised him because he was worthy. And you told 
all of your feelings. You sit right here because right now you don't matter. Depression don't matter. And anger don't matter. And tiredness don't matter. I am in the presence of God and I'm going to praise him according to his excellent greatness. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Somebody take five seconds and shout hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and high five him and say, praise him continually. Praise him continually. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Every service should be a great service. That service where you lost an hour of sleep when they take it forward. Where I feel like I got to come in here and raise the dead. <laughs> that service should be unaffected. They all should be consistent. I know everybody's going to come in here from 212. Everybody's amped and food trucks out there and music's blaring and games going off and we're blowing t-shirts with cannons all over the room. It's like a big party slash church and everybody's full of food and everybody's joyous and everybody's ready for what God's going to do. And what I want to look at people and say, by the way, we do this every Sunday. We act like this every Sunday. Because he's not more worthy of praise because it's 212. I don't know if this is getting across. Am I doing this? <laughs> Jesus, this is what I preached last week on the East Coast to your East Coast brothers and sisters. Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane and he purchased your salvation on the cross. So he won your salvation on the cross, but the cross was assured in the garden. Because if you've ever read the garden of Gethsemane, Jesus being a man like you and being a man like me was filled with, I don't want to. I'm telling you, I can relate to that. The Bible says in the Luke account that his sweat became like drops of blood. Scientists say that is a condition that is possible, but is so extremely rare because the emotional trauma one would have to be experiencing for your body to do that is so extreme, very few people have ever been there. And he's got blood coming out his pores like sweat because of what he's about to face. And so he cries out to God, God, if there's any other way, if there's any other route, is there any other deal we can cut? Is there any other pathway? If at all possible, let this cup pass from me. There is a wrestling going on. But what does he do? He finally gets to this point. Nevertheless, not my will. And some of you are going to have to come in on Sundays and say, nevertheless. Okay? I had to go get my kid out of school. He's been suspended. Me and my husband aren't getting along and I found out I didn't get the new promotion that I was qualified for and promised. But the fact is, nevertheless, my God is a good God. Come on. My God is a great God. My God is a gracious and merciful God. He's my provider. He's my healer. He's my salvation. He's my victory. He's my everything. And I'm going to sacrifice all that and I'm going to praise him anyway. Somebody say amen. <laughs> now, let me move on. Man. Next thing you need to understand, when you're talking about God inhabiting praise, help me, Lord. Okay, I'm going off script now, as I always do. When they built God a temple in the Old Testament, when Solomon built the temple, on the day they were dedicating it, the glory of God came and God couldn't fit. In Acts chapter 16, I might be preaching a series out of the book of Acts next. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, because everybody don't know, are the four accounts of Jesus in the Bible. The next is the book of Acts. 
It's the acts of the apostles because those 12 disciples, Jesus is gone. So they become the 12 apostles. And they go through the whole earth because Jesus said, go into the whole earth, preaching the gospel, baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So they, and they evangelize the whole known world. No internet. Okay. And you get to Acts chapter 16 and Paul and Silas were in a city called Philippi from which we get the book Philippians. And Paul was going around, Apostle Paul, and he's preaching and the Bible says and the word of God is spreading mightily, but there's a girl that's following him, a little girl. And they said that the little girl would constantly scream, these are men of the most high God. Sounds good. And they're walking from one place to another, one street. These are men of the Most High God. These are servants of the Most High. And said, so finally, something hit Paul that this ain't, something ain't right. Because sometimes it can look good, but it's coming from a bad place. And they, she was saying the right thing, but it was becoming a distraction. And Paul spun on her and cast a demon out of her. And the Bible says it was a spirit of divination. For those of you who wonder what that is, that's the spirit behind fortune telling. Stay away from it. Okay? Now look, you would think they'd have a great church service because somebody's just been delivered from a demon. No. Because of her ability to project the future, she was the one everybody would consult before they would place their bets. And the Bible says when the town realized they had lost their means of profit. Let me tell you something. Everybody don't want you to be free. Because wherever you're weak, somebody's profiting off of it. You can't manage your credit, somebody's profiting off of it. Y'all ain't saying nothing right here. If you can't manage your money, somebody's profiting off of it. Okay? If you had huge daddy issues and you got a father wound and you grew up and became promiscuous, there's a whole lot of guys waiting to profit off of it. Come on, I'm just shooting straight with you. Wherever there's a weakness, there's somebody taking advantage of weakness. And this whole town wanted her to stay demon possessed. It was in their best interest for her to stay messed up. Jesus set her free. Okay? Then they came at him and started beating, I mean, Apostle Paul set it free. They came and started beating Paul and Silas with sticks. Called the magistrates and had them thrown in prison. They sit on a mud floor in their own human waste with rats and cockroaches crawling across their legs, bound hand and feet to a wall by chains, and they drop down food into the hole through a grate, and it falls on the ground. That's what they were in. Now look what the Bible says they did. Go home and read the whole account, Acts chapter 16 today. The Bible said they started singing and praising God. Now let me tell you what Ron would have done. I'm out here preaching. And this is the thanks I get. And I'm giving my life to the gospel. And I could be at home with my family. And now here I am out here and the thanks I get is, God done let me get tied up. I done got beat with sticks. I'm bruised and bleeding. And they dropping food through a grate and I got rats crawling across my face. I've been complaining my head off. I know, y'all pray for me. I know you've never experienced any of that, but y'all pray for me. <laughs> okay? And the Bible says that they start singing. Okay, when they start singing and praising God, go read the account. The jail... Doors, all the way down the prison. And people, I've always preached, God will open the prison doors if you praise him. That's not what was happening. When they started praising God, God couldn't fit in the jail cell. And their praise was so magnificent that when the glory of God began to fill the room, there wasn't room. So the doors had to begin to open to make room for God. And let me tell you something. Nobody else was praising. They were the only ones that were praising. But while they were
were praised, everybody got set free. You've got to come in here and realize sometimes your praise is not about you, but it's for the nine people on the road who are not praising, and your praise is reproductive. Because the Bible says all the doors were open. I want to praise till your door opens, and your door opens, and your door opens, and your door opens. I want to praise in all the doors. Somebody. Oh, just a minute. Somebody's been going through a difficult spot. Stand to your feet right here, just right in the middle of the service. You're just going through a difficult spot. Okay? Now, I want you to slay every one of them negative emotions. And I'm going to give you 60 seconds to give God a sacrifice of praise. Take it up! Come on. Hey! I'm gonna praise you anyhow. I'm gonna praise you when I'm free. I'm gonna praise you when I feel all tied up. I'm gonna praise you when I'm low. I'm gonna praise you when I'm praise you when I'm struggling. Praise you when I'm energetic. Praise you when I'm tired. Come on, somebody, kill that emotion. Kill it. Kill it. Give him the sacrifice. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, shout hallelujah! Touch your neighbor and say, and don't ever stop praising. Don't, don't ever stop. Mm. Yay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you can't get me wound up want to calm me right back down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Say, why are you saying yeah? Because sometimes praise ain't words. The Bible said just make a joyful noise. Ah! Hallelujah. Just make a joy. Just make a, just make a noise. Let the enemy know I won. I won. Y'all got to quit. The praise, everybody got their doors open, not just them, because praise is reproductive. Let me give an example. For those of you who don't know, and I wouldn't advise you to ever go to one, if you want to have a really dead service, get a bunch of preachers together. I've never been to deader services than preacher conferences and preacher conventions. I mean, I've been to some of them that had thousands of ministers sitting in it. And I thought they was going to roll a casket down the aisle at any time. <laughs> I mean, just, I don't understand it. A lot of preachers, I don't know if you've noticed, some of them don't even come out during praise and worship. They wait till it's time to preach before they even come out. So they want you to do it, but they don't do it. Yeah, I'm calling you out. <laughs> I'm 55, I can take it. 35 out of hell back, 55, I really don't care. <laughs> just, just dead. And so, this has been a few years back now. I went to one of these, and it was a massive, it wasn't a conference, it was a convention. In a convention center in a major city, and there were thousands of pastors crossing all denominational lines. I mean, I paid the money for registration, I went flew, got on the plane, I, I did all the investment because I heard that I needed to be there and some of my favorite speakers were gonna be there. So the first night, you know, I'm thinking, boy, we gonna blow the doors off because the redemption, when we do open the night, we gonna blow dry your hair for you. <laughs> 212, if you don't have any, you say, well, I ain't got none, we'll grow it back. <laughs> okay. 
So I'm sitting there, and we're going to blow the doors off this place. I'm in here with 5,000 pastors. We're going to peel the paint off the wall. My God, that was the deadest thing I'd ever been to in my whole life. And I'm on about the second row. Huge convention hall. And the Lord spoke to me just as clearly as you're hearing my voice through this sound system. He said, I want you to get out in front of everybody and dance. That's not what I said. Now, I was at that point in my ministry, I was wanting to, I was wanting to gain people's respect. Okay? I was wanting to earn their respect. Nobody knew who I was and nobody cared. So I'm in the midst of a lot of peers that I want them to like me. But them people, they were just standing. I felt sorry for the people on stage trying to lead them. And God said, get out and dance. Now you gotta understand, I'm sitting there and I remember the, the burden of that thing. I, I, was, I was getting miserable because I was just wrestling with it back and forth. Like, I don't, I don't wanna do that. <laughs> it's a sacrifice, yeah, it's a sacrifice. I don't want to. Lord, let this cup pass from me. <laughs> but finally, the, the weight of it becomes so heavy. And any of you who have disobeyed God, you know what I'm talking about. The weight of it becomes so heavy that I'm okay. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> And I get out there right in front of the stage where the podium is. And I, but I close my eyes. Because I don't want to see. And I turn it loose. I mean, I turn it loose. Now, look, don't let the skin fool you. I got a few moves. But I am not a person who wants to put my moves on display. <laughs> so I keep my back turned to those 5,000 pastors. And I'm looking at the podium. And then I keep my eyes closed. And I mean arms and legs going everywhere. I'm praising like a mad fool. Now this, now this is the same room I told you I thought was a funeral. And I remember, it seemed like an eternity, but it was probably only 90 seconds or two minutes. I don't know. I remember I, I wanted to see what was going on behind me. And I had my eyes closed. And I remember I got the nerve to start turning. <laughs> and I turned around. And I opened my eyes. And that whole room was going bananas. The, I don't mean the first two rows. That room to the back wall was going bonkers. They were running laps in the building. They were turning over chairs. They were dancing and twirling and screaming and shouting and jumping. And the power of God began to fill that building and people begin to break under that power. Come on, lives begin to change in the power of God. Why? Because sometimes God is wanting one person and saying, if you'll let me be the entry point, I'll reproduce that place all over the room. And you've got to understand, sometimes when God brings you in here, hallelujah, when God brings you in here, when God brings you in here, if nobody else is paid, you got to be the entry point. Come on. Whatever it is you got left in you, give your God a praise. Hey. One, two, three, four, go. Come on. Woo. Turn your own around again. One more time, come on, whoop!
Stand with me if you would, everybody, on your feet. Tell three people right now in your circle to say, this is church. This. Come on and bless him. Now let me tell you what you just did. I'm putting every last one of y'all on YouTube. Okay, now let me tell you, I'm not calling people out, just let me tell you what happens. So they go through the scroll and they see a bunch of people in a dark room not doing nothing. Next one, a bunch of people in a dark room not doing anything. Next one, another, and they got a guy walking around with an ear mic. And the next one, and the next, and then they're going to come to redemption. What is this strange sight? This is the church of Jesus Christ. And we intend on the kingdom coming. Give him one more praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> hey. Break it down to the base. Just the base, just the base, just base. May the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you. May he establish you and give you peace. I love you and I can't wait to see you next week. Praise your way out, let's go, come on. Hey! How many of you have been
been enjoying Heavily Chaos? Well, guess what? You can download this message for free by going to roncarpenter.com slash message. Are you ready for the 212 conference? Well, it's coming up fast. We're kicking off 212 with Red Nights featuring incredible artists such as Naomi Rain, Jonathan Stamper, Jonathan Trailer, and Natalie Grant. Our desire is the presence of God, and we want to see His might and compassion in a way that we've never experienced. After that, Ron Carpenter, Hope Carpenter, Rich Wilkerson Jr., and John Maxwell are coming to show us Ministry Under the Hood. We'll see you from May 2nd to the 3rd in San Jose. Don't miss this free event, so register today at myredemption.cc slash events. Unforgettable ocean views, breathtaking mountains, and the knowledge you need to succeed in your marriage, life, and business? What more could you want? Register today for the Power Couple Experience with Ron and Hope Carpenter at the luxurious Ritz-Carlton from August 8th through the 10th. We'll see you there. Register today at myredemption.cc slash events. If you don't fight, then you don't win has completely transformed our minds. In Pastor Hope's latest book, you'll learn how to overcome wrong mindsets and be stirred up to overcome every challenge that you face in life. Get your copy today wherever books are sold. Additionally, if you want to live at the next level and be coached by Pastor Hope, you can get a copy for free by joining Pastor Hope's inner circle. Go to hopecarpenter.com slash we win for a free trial. If today's worship experience blessed you, please consider supporting the ministry by giving. You can visit roncarpenter.com to give and to learn more about us. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we can't wait to see you next week.